Let's start in 5A Division One, a backyard battle. The Dorman Cavaliers and Boiling Springs Bulldogs had their game knocked out during the regular season because of Helene and the rescheduling led to that game simply being canceled. Tonight as six and three teams each, they go at it in the opening round in the new playoff structure with Idle Dutch Fork awaiting the winner. Here's Todd Summers with the recap. Boiling Springs on the road taking on rival Dorman first Bulldogs possession. Bowling Springs goes for the fake punt, but Kyle Patterson holds on to the football and Contavian Anderson makes the tackle to set the Cavaliers up inside the Bulldogs 20 yard line. However, Dorman's first play from scrimmage, Nick Means fumbles the football and Cohen Chalk recovers for Boiling Springs. After a scoreless first quarter, the Bulldogs get on the board midway through the second quarter. Lincoln Husky beats the blitz with a quick release, throws deep, and fellow North-South All-Star Kyle Patterson runs under it for a 27-yard touchdown. Boiling Springs leads 6-0. Less than a minute later, Cab backed up deep in their own territory. The snap goes over the head of Bryce O'Neill while he recovers the loose ball in the end zone. It is a safety. Bulldogs up 8-0. 20 seconds to play in the first half. Cavs on the move, but Bryce O'Neill does not see the defender, and Ryshawn Morgan picks off the pass and sees nothing but green grass, racing 70 yards for the touchdown. Boiling Springs up 15-0. One second to play in the first half following another O'Neill interception. Michael Dueck connects on a 36-yard field goal to give Bowling Springs an 18-0 lead at the break. Late third quarter, Lincoln Husky extends the play with his legs, fires downfield to Kyle Patterson for a 29-yard gain on the very next play. Javin Chim straight ahead for the one-yard touchdown. Bulldogs in control, up 25 to nothing. And midway through the fourth quarter, Lincoln Husky fakes the handoff and goes back to Kyle Patterson for a 12-yard touchdown as the Bulldogs put away the Cavaliers. Final score, 32 to nothing. Just so happy for them, man. They fought, they called. We were here a year ago and lost basically on the last play of the game. And that's kind of driven us. And it was a, a thought this whole week of coming back, of getting up, but then putting the nail in the coffin to finish things off. In Roebuck for the High School Red Zone, I'm Todd Summers. Well, Malden had to make the trek down to the Midlands, taking on River Bluff. Tamari Shepard in at quarterback for the Mavs. Third quarter hooks up with Patrick Murphy, but a bumpy night for the Mavs. That one gets away. Show you the final as River Bluff ends Malden's season at 2-9. They close in a five-game skid, 36-6. Elsewhere in the 5A Upper State at PC, where Burns had a call home because their stadium is being renovated. They took on Lexington. First quarter was 6-2. Burns looked like Lexington was driving. Torrey and Mills came up with the interception. And then early second quarter and Shane Dixon, part of that strike force that Burns comes up with a block punt, gave him great field position. Trey Segarra returned a couple of weeks ago from an injury that kept him out throughout the year. A huge difference to have him back for Burns. He punches it in right here for a 13-8 lead. Burns led 13-11 at the break, then takes over in the second half. Rebels roll on 32-11 is the final score. They get Spartanburg next week. They improve their record to 5-5 five five on the season. Other action in the 5A Division II upper state. Well, you had a backyard battle. Lower bracket of the 5A, uh, first year they've done two different brackets in the largest classification. Mikel Skinner and Riverside taking on Greenville, a Greenville team that came in allowing 40 points a game. Riverside, one thing they've got, they've got dudes who can get the ball to the end zone. Skinner right there on a fourth and short play, took it on in, 6 nothing. Later on in the opening quarter, Gideon Murheeb and Messiah Butler comes up with a pick for Greenville, then Banks Fountain hooking up with Javion Henderson. Greenville had a 10-6 advantage. Nice job extending the play by Fountain, finding the receiver for the score. Skinner, though, you can throw it to him, you can hand it to him. Biggest guy on the field gets in there. Riverside moves on to the victory. And they get the win, 47-38. to They're moving on to the next round. They'll face Idle Gaffney. Other action in the 5A Division II Upper State. Woodmont over in the Rock Hill area loses the heartbreaker, 38-35. And east side season also comes to an end in Indian land, 34-7. Meanwhile, Hillcrest at home against Nation Ford. That's a fathead of Jackson Free. That's Jackson Free playing quarterback. When you've got another quarterback named Caleb Sutton who can also play receiver, why not put them both on the field? They hook up on the beautiful connection in the third quarter. It extends a Rams lead to 35-17. That was a 46-yarder. How about taking it on in for the score? That's a quarterback keep for Braden. That's actually a 
Handoff to Braden Johnson for the touchdown. Hillcrest gets an eighth win on the year. They will get a rematch with Greenwood, which knocked him off a couple of weeks ago. 48-23, Rams coming away with the victory. In the 1A upper state, well, now you've got Abbeville in that classification after they were dominant in 2A. Panthers enter the night 36-3 in playoff games since 2015. They came down the yellow steps, touched the monument, and took the field against C.A. Johnson from Columbia. And Demarcus Leach showed who's boss early on, 7-0. Leach can throw it. Carson Norman on the receiving end made it 14-zip. And the Panthers roll to a ninth win in 10 games in the first meeting ever. A. Johnson. They move on to the next round to get their county neighbor, Dixie. Meanwhile, Ware Shoals at home against Ridge Spring Moneta in another 1A Upper State playoff battle. Hornets happy to be on the home field. Visitors, Jaden Holloway going to hook up with Lucius O'Connor for the touchdown and a 24-16 third quarter lead. Holloway later makes it 31-16. Ridge Spring Moneta Trojans knock off the Hornets. Ware Shoals season comes to an end at 4-6 with a 45-28 loss. As we mentioned, Dixie advancing. They've got a win against Williston Elko 42 to nothing and Louisville ending Calhoun Falls charter season with a 66 to nothing triumph.